Hey guys, Keaton here from TechSmart, and Apple's fall, late fall event has just concluded. They released tons of great goodies there, and they kind of caught me by surprise with some of the names and how they went ahead and chose them. So they released the new iPad Air, which is the 9.7 inch iPad. Then they went ahead and released the brand new iPad Mini 2 with Retina Display. And we could pretty much predict everything except the iPad Air's name changes. That was something I didn't even expect. Then they went ahead and pulled the cape off the brand new Mac Pro, which just looks absolutely gorgeous. We found all the specifications out in there, when it'll be uh, when we can go ahead and pick one up and then they went ahead and killed off the 15 inch macbook pro and replaced it solely with the 15 uh the 15 inch macbook pro with retina display they kind of dropped the price tag on both models the 13 inch and 15 inch and then they went ahead and upgraded the 13 inch macbook pro with retina display so that's super cool all around and then they went ahead and debuted os 10 mavericks or os x mavericks and it was it, it really caught me by surprise and how they're not charging you and you can go ahead and download it right now for free. Just go to the App Store, search Mavericks, and it's a free download. So that's super cool by Apple. So in this video today, we're going to be comparing the brand new iPad Air to the brand new iPad Mini 2 with Retina Display. And we're going to see how the specifications hold up, which are different, and is it really worth going ahead and upgrading and spending more money this year. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. So starting off with the iPad Air here, it features a 9.7 inch retina display with a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a PPI or pixels per inch of 264. Now on the iPad mini two side of things here, it features a screen real estate of 7.9 inches with of course a retina display and a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a pixels per inch of 264. So they're pretty much the same in terms of resolution, just you're gonna be getting a few extra inches for your dollar. If that's something you really want, I definitely recommend going with the full-fledged experience, obviously the iPad. Air. They both feature thinner sides, so screen real estate is going to be more. You're going to get more screen real estate for your dollar here on both units, so that's something I definitely love. Now, in terms of processing power here, they both feature the A7 chip, which features 64 bit architecture, and they both feature the M7 coprocessor, so that's going to be great for fitness applications and just GPS coordination. And that's something that I love, I love a lot on my brand new iPhone 5S, and I'm very happy they incorporated it. In incorporated it within the brand new set of iPad Air and the iPad Mini 2. Now in terms of cameras here, we both we will see on both units a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera with 720p HD video recording. So that's going to be looking great for Skype, FaceTime, or selfies if you're into that thing. I'm definitely not. Now on the rear side of things, it comes with the 5 megapixel eyesight camera on both units with 1080p HD video recording and it, it features an aperture of 2.4 and I'm very surprised they didn't bump it down to 2.2 as we see that on the iPhone 5S, but I think that's definitely an upgrade. We'll see on a later date and just as a side note here the 2.2 aperture on the iPhone 5s that's probably one of the big buying aspects for me is I love taking pictures with my phone so in terms of battery life here they both feature 10 hours of battery life or at least claim that in weight this is the big thing here the iPad Air features a weight of one pound for the Wi-Fi version and for the cellular version it features 1.05 pounds that is pretty substantial as the Previous generation iPad 4 came in at 1.4 pounds, so there's definitely going to be a weight difference on the iPad, and that's something I would love to have without them kind of kind of hammering down the specifications. I'm happy that it's high specificated uh, device followed by a low weight, and that's just a combo I love. Now, in terms of the iPad Mini side of things here, it features a weight of 0.73 pounds uh, for the Wi-Fi version, and then 0.75 pounds for the cellular version. So pricing is pretty much everything here, but let's just get the colors out of the way. So it comes in the space gray, which we saw on the iPhone 5S, which just looks absolutely gorgeous and definitely is, that's something I'm going to be getting. And then it comes in the white and silver model. So that's pretty cool. I was I really wanted to see the gold model this year, but that's something I think we're going to be seeing next year if they do want to roll out the gold to the iPad side of things. So pricing for the iPad Air starts in at $499 for the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi model and goes all the way up to 128 gigabytes. And then for the cellular model, if you don't really have Wi-Fi in your location or just want to be able to be able to use it wherever without always having or always needing to have a Wi-Fi connection. It starts off at $629 for the 16 gigabyte cellular version, and that's available on all four United States carriers. Now, in terms of the iPad Mini 2 side of things here, this is where it gets a bit funky as we did not see this last year. It starts off at $399 for the 16 gigabyte model and goes all the way up to 128 gigabytes. And now if you want to go ahead and get the cellular version, the LTE version, as both of these feature LTE, it's going to run you around $529 for the 16 gigabyte model and then go all the way up to 120 28 gigabytes. So last year we saw the iPad mini priced at $329 and the fact that we're raising at $70 more this year, that could be kind of a turnoff for some consumers looking to get into the Apple ecosystem with tablets. So that's okay there for me. I don't really mind spending an extra $70. And they also came out with a few new cases for the iPad Air and those look pretty sweet. And I like how Apple's starting to incorporate accessories like they kind of they did with the iPhone 4 and then pretty much stopped for the 5 and 4S. So I'm very happy to see that we're going to get some OEM branding on our uh, on our tablets. 
So what do you guys think of the brand new tablets coming from Cupertino? Do you guys like the uh, iPad Air or the iPad Mini 2? Again, just let me know in the comments section down below as there's definitely tons of controversy in terms of pricing, specifications, and it'd just be nice to hear where you guys stand on these brand new tablets. Also, going to this video a like if you guys enjoyed what this video is about. It's really telling us that both of these tablets are identical, just one features two inches more than the other and then one features $100 more of a price tag than the other and then go ahead and give this video a like if you guys are super pumped for some giveaways as we've recently broken 25,000 subscribers which is more than I ever dreamed of and I'd love to go ahead and give it back to you guys so if you guys can kind of take a guess we're going to be giving away some of the brand new devices that were released today on the channel also go ahead and subscribe and it's 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 somewhere in lower tier this video and it will let you know when I produce a brand new video and with the new stuff coming out we're going to be having iPad Air, iPad Mini 2, uh, new Mac Pro cover MacBook Pro Retina 15 and 13 inch coverage as well as OS 10 Mavericks coverage so it's just gonna be tons of coverage coming to you guys as this is the last month with tech extravaganza of 2013 so thank you guys once again and I look forward to seeing you in my next video bye bye